In the past episodes, we've demonstrated how to test shielded cables, um, particularly coaxial cable, by using an ESD gun, zap the outer shield, and then look at the voltage waveform using a high bandwidth oscilloscope. Um, but not many people have the luxury of owning an ESD gun and also a high bandwidth oscilloscope. So people are asking, is there any other way of testing uh, coaxial cables? Remember, we introduced this uh, general purpose comb generator. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a comb generator, which is pretty uh, low cost, to uh, troubleshoot um, the shooting effectiveness of a coaxial cable. Okay, let's have a look at the setup. Here again, we have a spectral analyzer, an RF current probe, uh, works up to one gigahertz, and, uh, and our general purpose comb generator. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to test um, whether the comb generator has a good shielding effectiveness itself, right? So there's no point of using this to sh test shielded the cable if there's a leakage coming from the port, right? As we demonstrated in the past, that if there's leakage um, leaking from this uh, uh, RF output, then you connect even with, with a very good quality shielded cable, you will have uh, RF current um, on the um, outside of the shield, therefore picked up by the uh, um, RF current probe. So the first step is to test if the shooting effectiveness of this uh, comb generator is good enough. So in terms of the setup, I use a uh, pre-amplifier arm, no uh, attenuator, starting from 20 MHz, stop at 1 GHz, uh, because this one I selected 20 MHz comb frequency. So uh, let's see if there's any leakage coming from here. Okay, so I put in here, as you can see, Currently, I do not measure any leakage uh, noise, which means the comb generator is well shielded, uh, at least up to one gigahertz. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, next is we are going to connect a shielded cable. So we have three uh, cable on the test today, right? So you can see that the difference is this is just a uh, sort of a flexible uh, coaxial cable. This is what we call a rigid, flex rigid coaxial cable because you can see it's quite rigid, right? Once you form a shape, it stays in a shape. And um, uh, so clearly, you know, the shielding uh, material, uh, how they build it will be very different with this uh, flexible one. And this is again uh, a typical uh, coaxial cable. Um, so yeah, we're going to test uh, uh, the performance uh, of each one, right? So shall we start with uh, this one then? Okay, so this is a long cable. Um, so I need to terminate one end using a 50 ohm terminating resistor, okay? And to perform the test, it's important to ensure that the connector with the load is well, you know, it's uh, it's got a really good uh, grip here, right? So no no loose connection on this end, and also no loose connection on this end. Okay, so okay, so now I connect it to uh, to the comb generator and I pass this through, right? So you can see all of a sudden I have uh, noise picked up by the RF current probe. Now the question is, is this really the noise generated by the comb generator? Actually, no, because we know that once you um, insert a cable into a RF current probe, this cable acts as an antenna and it will pick up ambient noise, you know, you see, like that. So in this case, we actually don't know whether we picked up ambient noise or uh, the noise coming from the generator, therefore leaking outside of the shield. So if I disconnect it, for example, you can see some difference, right, but not significantly different. You can see something going on there. So how do we overcome this uh, challenge then? So the method we're going to use is rather than look at the full spectrum, right, up all the way up to one gigahertz, we could look at certain frequency range. So you could select 900 to one gigahertz or 400 to 500 megahertz just as a 
uh, you know, a frequency band to look at the performance. So in this case, let's just uh, select a frequency range between 400 megahertz and uh, 500 megahertz, shall we? Okay, so now I select the uh, a frequency band between 400 and 500 megahertz, right? And the noise floor actually is pretty high. Therefore, again, I can't see anything. So the next step is I'm going to reduce the bandwidth um, to a very low frequency, uh, low frequency bandwidth. Okay, so this is currently at nine kilohertz, and you can see it sweeping. I know this comb generator generates frequency every twenty megahertz, which means this is four hundred. Then four. This is four twenty, four forty, four sixty, four eighty, and five hundred. So you see here, that's 420. I did pick up some noise, did I? Here again, here again, here again. So also have some other ambient noise. So and this noise level is about, let's go to the marker. Right, if I put in here, for example, that is 440 megahertz, and I picked up about 2 dB microvolts. 2 dB microvolts. Okay? So, uh, so that must be the uh, noise leaking out of this coaxial cable then. Um, so in order to prove that, let me disconnect the power of the comb generator. Let's see if you see that disappear. So that is disappearing. This disappeared again. So the other noise again is just ambient noise. So what we focus on is 420, 440. So you can see 440 disappeared. Okay, so yeah, so we did measure some uh, uh, noise or well, signal on the uh, outside of this shielded cable. This indicates, um, you know, the performance of this shielded cable. Well, this, as we me measured, is about 2 to 3 dB microvolts picked up by the uh, RF current probe. Without a benchmark, we actually don't know how, how good this cable is, right? So let's have a look at this one, right? As we mentioned, this cable is a um, uh, rigid, semi-rigid or flex rigid uh, coaxial cable. This should be should have a really good um, performance. So let's see whether that's the case. Okay. So as a comparison, again, I'm, I tighten the connector. Therefore, yeah, this is all tight up. Now I'm powered up, and then I'm going to uh, put this. Okay. Let's have a look at uh, the results. Okay. Again, I pick up some ambient noise, but at 420, I actually didn't pick up anything. 440, again, no. 460, no noise. 480, no noise. 500, no noise, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, this, clearly you can see the difference, right? By using this more rigid coaxial cable, um, really, we, we couldn't pick up uh, noise at, uh, you know, at the frequency points we we uh, we used to pick up, right? So yeah, so you can see the, the performance difference uh, of this coaxial cable. How about we try this one? Then? Okay, so let's try this one. Now at least we have a good comparison, okay? So um, let's try this coaxial cable. This is uh, another one, right? I, again, tighten the connector and then I tighten here okay oh look at that right you see the difference right this cable actually is really bad in terms of the shielding effectiveness you can see here I picked it up and guess what 23.35 dB microvolts so that is at least 25 dB worse compared with this one and 20 dB worse compared with this one, right? So this is just a, a really a good demonstration to show you that the right attitude for engineers is trust but verify, okay? You trust the, the distributor but always uh, verify. As you can see here, this coaxial cable has proved to be really poor in terms of the shooting effectiveness whereas this one is really really good this cable is not bad right um, obviously this is a, a lot better so yeah hopefully um, this gives you another 
uh, method of measuring uh, the shooting effectiveness of coaxial cable and in terms of the cost is really low you can just buy a general purpose uh, uh, comb generator RF current probe spectral analyzer then you can do the test uh, it's worth mentioning that if you don't have a spectral analyzer you can also use a uh, oscilloscope which has um, you know uh, one gigahertz bandwidth then you should also be able to see the difference okay hope you like this episode and we'll see you next time